So, Senator, I wanted to ask you, and I, you know, I know it's been a couple of days since uh, President Zelensky of Ukraine uh, mm-hmm. addressed Congress, but in that time, since you all have had time to mull that over, has there been hearts and minds that are changing about how we approach this crisis? Well, there's a lot of discussions that have been happening. Some of them are, uh, you know, on the side of things we can't talk about. But I know that there's a great bipartisan effort to want to help Ukraine, to to help them and to unite more of the world community against uh, Putin and his actions. And I think that is happening. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we all keep seeing these pictures, uh, you know, the, the Russians bombing civilian sites, places with children. I, are we starting to lose a little patience with that and maybe not let that go on for much longer? Well, I think it's very important that we hold him accountable for those actions and declaring him uh, as a war criminal as the president did. I agree with that. Very important for Europe and the United States and other countries to make sure that we're doing everything we can to support Ukraine. What's your sense that this could be at some point resolved diplomatically? Well, there's always opportunity, and the last couple of times that we've talked with President Zelensky, he has mentioned that there have been opportunities for communication. I know the president is talking to, you know, uh, China this morning. I know that various European leaders have been talking to Putin, so I think there's always uh, opportunity for that. What do you think of Zelensky as a leader? I think it's been phenomenal, the amount of communication to the world and clarifying what he needs. The resolve of him and his nation to fight this aggressor has just been incredible. On the other side of the diplomacy question, and this is a little bit personal for me because I'm really in in genuine fear that we could get into direct conflict with Russia. What's your thought? It's very important that we use our economic power to address this issue because then you are taking away the economic ability to fuel those efforts. So the more aggressive we can be, I signed on very early to say that we're not going to give them preferential treatment and status as it relates to trade in the most favored nation clauses that we do for trade organizations, why we have to focus on taking things that they get access to our markets for their economy. We need to use the economic might. And of course, that dovetails into gas prices because certainly this has had an effect on that. Uh, You know, there's talk of a federal gas tax holiday. Any chance we're going to get a break? There's a lot of discussion about what to do to help in these areas of trying to get more supply. So I knew the United States is going to have conversations with the world community about this because this is going to be an issue over a long period of time. And I think that we have to ask people, you know, in this environment, too, what else they can do to to help us right now. So I think all of these issues are going to be on the table. We sent a letter yesterday to oil company executives asking them to come before the Commerce Committee and talk about this. And so we're going to look for some answers. Well, and, you know, I know you've uh, been a, a watchdog with that. There's a lot of folks who feel like there's a little price gouging going on right now, especially with oil having come back down a little bit. Well, I think, you know, we all want to do something to fight the aggression that uh, the actions that Putin has taken. But I think what we need is the oil companies to tell us what they're going to do to help in that effort as well. Okay. Anything you want to add, Senator? No. All right. Thanks a bunch. Appreciate it. Yep.